Hey, what's up? Todd here with Grayscale Gorilla, and we just launched a new course on Plus about ACEs. In our course, Chad actually kind of showed you how he likes to work with ACEs, all of the benefits of using it as a color space. So as I was going through the footage, I noticed there was a really nice kind of five to six minute chunk where Chad just gives a really nice introduction. And I really learned a lot of the benefits and why you would want to use it. So I thought it'd be a really good idea to share it with you guys here. And after watching this video, if you want to learn more, click the link below to check out Grayscale Gorilla Plus, where we have this exclusive ACES training, training for Cinema 4D, Arnold, Redshift, and lots of others. All right, enough of that, let's roll the video. Hey, what's up everybody? In this video, we're gonna talk all about ACES. So what the heck is ACES? Well, ACES stands for Academy Color Encoding System. Now, it really is a system, but it's also a lot more than that. And we're gonna talk all about what that stuff is here in a minute. Let's start a little bit further back. So ACES began by the, the same group, the Academy that brought you the Oscars, as a way to create a consistent way for companies across uh, the motion picture industry to deal with color. The residual sort of benefit for us is ACES CG, which we're gonna talk about in a minute. The easiest way to think about ACES is to sort of break it down into two different categories. There's ACES, the system, and then ACES, the color space. So let's talk about ACES, the system first. It was designed as a way to consolidate and simplify the color management process for feature film, but it also has uh, benefits that reach far beyond that. So think of ACES as just a way of working with different formats, and you would bring in all these different multiple capture formats, work in ACES, and then be able to put them out again in, into the world in different various formats. Think about it as an airlock. You have an airlock, right? And now let's say that airlock is ACES. And in the airlock, it's, it's like regulating air pressure and whatnot. So you need to bring things in to regulate that air pressure. I'm gonna pretend to know something about space for a second. And then everything that comes out could go anywhere. So it's really this like in-between color space management system, right? And what they use is they use these things to come in and out. They call them input device transforms and output device transforms. So you can transform any capture device into ACES using an IDT, input device transform, and then you can go back out again to any format that you want, whether it's Rec. 709, maybe you're going back out to film, and those are output device transforms, ODTs. So everything in the middle, you're working in ACES. Okay, so that's ACES the system. So let's talk about ACES the color space. The color space is actually what excites me more than the system. I don't deal with a ton of footage, but the two together, it's a great combination. And believe me, I'm gonna preface this by saying there are a lot of people way smarter about the color science stuff than I am. Now, ACES CG is a wide gamut color space that was designed specifically for doing 3D rendering, right? It is a broader color range, wider gamut than sRGB. Now, what that means is that you're gonna be able to push saturation much, much further. You're gonna be able to push light intensity much, much further. And when you have a color space that reacts more like film, you're able to really push your lighting a lot further. Intensities can get brighter, therefore giving you a little bit more energy in your indirect bounce lights in GI, right? Also, it has a really uh, filmic response curve. It sort of reacts very much like film. If you start to blow out the image, it's not like a linear brightness, like that's the entire image is getting brighter. You can really see it. It looks like you're exposing film when you bring the intensity up of a light or maybe your camera uh, exposure in ACES CG. Uh, you can also like push saturation really, really far. There's a great article that Chris Rehan wrote that we're gonna link below where he talks about when he started working at Animal Logic and he was walking through the studio, he saw some artists working on the Lego Batman movie, which had these crazy colors mixing, these really bright reds and pinks. And he thought to himself, like, how the heck were they, are they getting these colors to blend like this without it haloing, without it fringing? And that's because they were working in Aces. So for instance, let's say you have a background plate that was shot in log, and you need to put a 3D render on top of that background plate and then spit it back out for comp, right? So Normally, in a normal workflow, you might have to pre-convert that log footage into a color space that you'd be working with in comp. So you'd have to pre-convert that footage, bring it into CG, try to match it as best you can, then spit out a linear EXR for the comper to try to like fudge and make it look like it's sitting in the plate, right? 
Well, the beauty of what ACES does is it's sort of like it levels the playing field for all capture devices. So if you have a log C footage and you bring it into, let's say, Cinema 4D with Arnold, you can use an input device transform and say, well, I know this footage was log and I'm going to bring it into ACES CG. And you literally can set this like little uh, converter. It's color space, but you're, you're almost doing a little conversion on it before it goes into your scene. So once you've put your IDT, your input device transform on it, now you're working in ACES CG. You can put your 3D on there, your renderings and all that stuff is in ACES CG, so that when you go back out to comp, the comper knows, oh, this came from ACES CG, cool. Oh, and I say I have that log footage too that I'm gonna use. So that came in as log, I'm also gonna bring that into ACES, and now I'm gonna comp everything, and then I can go back out to anything. I can go to Rec 709, I can go to sRGB, I can go to Rec 2020, I can go out to film. So ACES the system allows you uh, a unified place, a simplified place to deal with color and formats. Now, one drawback is Currently, the renderers that, that support ACES are pretty limited when it comes to Cinema 4D. Cinema 4D doesn't support open color I.O., which you definitely need to be able to load the proper ACES configuration file. But luckily, Arnold actually does. So a lot of our ACES training, we're going to be showing you how to work with it in Arnold because that's the one renderer that sort of supports the workflow from beginning to end. We're going to show you how to set up a scene in ACES. We're going to show you the benefits of ACES compared to, let's say, a tone mapper or a LUT. And then we're going to show you how to comp in ACES really briefly in Fusion, show you how to bring in a 3D render with footage and have it all married in ACES and then out back out to whatever you want, really. So it's, it's sort of like this mini series set of videos to try to get you up and running or at least understanding the benefits and what ACES really is. So I hope you enjoy the videos and I encourage everybody to go and learn more, learn as much about ACES as you want. We're going to drop lots of interesting links below. So happy learning and I'll see you in the next one.